As you can see, our infectivity is very high and we haven't really even spent much and we've infected most of the known world. Oh my goodness, it's as easy as that. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit and today we're playing Plague Inc. I know, it's a fantastic, lovely game where you have to create your own customized disease and somehow manage to infect and destroy the entire human world. It's a nice, fun, relaxing, casual game with a lot of funny text and things going on behind the scenes to make it nice and exciting. And of course, I'm going to be showing you, the lovely ladies and gentlemen at home, today a fantastic cheesy exploit which the developers have no way of stopping which allows you to speed your progress through the game by unlocking all of the genes very very quickly. Now of course before we dive into the game today I would like to say that this video is of course going up at a very tumultuous time in the real world. There's a lot of crazy and scary stuff going on and I strongly advise all of you to stay home as recommended and hey if you are hats off to you give yourself a pat on the back and go grab yourself a nice warm celebratory cup of tea and also consider looking up as to how you can help your friends, families and neighbours in this very trying time. After all, it's a very spiffing and gentlemanly thing to do to assist those in need. So be kind to each other and we can get through this very easily. Now, with all of that happy fun stuff out of the way, it's time to get into the desolation of the human race. Now, all you'll need to do today's exploit is quite simply a copy of Plague Inc. That's right, it's a fantastic lovely little game. So I think it's time we dive into the game and create today's lovely and deadly disease. Quite simply, you need to create a new game. Doesn't matter how far you we are into the game because you can still unlock just about everything. And this lovely little exploit works with just about any disease in the known universe, but for today's simplicity we're going to be playing as a bacteria. Now what are genes in this game? Well, they're actually really fun little additional modifiers you can add to your disease to make it slightly more overpowered. In our case we've managed to pick up the bonus ATP boost, meaning we get additional starting DNA, we've got hydrophile, and we've got the ionized helix. This is going to make our bacteria extra special today. Now, of course, as you can see, we've only unlocked 7% of genes, and by the end of this video, we're going to have 100% unlocked. So how do you normally unlock genes? Quite simply, all you need to actually do is to just win the game. Doesn't matter what difficulty you do it on, if you use cheats or whatever. And for today's simplicity, we're going to actually win the game on casual. Casual is great because it's meant for new players wanting a quick game. Basically, no one washes their hands, research doctors don't work, sick people are given hugs, and probably no one drinks tea in this universe. So we're going to unleash our lovely bacteria Pax 12 onto the world. So welcome to Plague Inc, ladies and gentlemen. It's lovely. It's a pretty fun and surprisingly accurate little simulator allowing you to see the spread of diseases across the world. Now, of course, as you will remember, I've made sure my bacteria is slightly better in humid environments. Now, I've decided to start my disease in Brazil because it's in a pretty prime location to infect most of the world. It is fantastically rural, it's humid, and it is hot. For bacteria, they come with a couple of bonus abilities, meaning they are relatively more heat resistant than most, which is always very nice. Now for our first opening move, we're mostly just going to be investing in forms of transmission and livestock is a great place to start as this is a rural country. Now as our disease begins to spread, we're going to get more evolution points, allowing us to invest in fantastical new bonuses like, say, being able to transmit via rats or birdie boys or even water. Imagine that a disease which is transferable by water. Imagine if we had to stop drinking tea in order to stop a disease. Now that would be terrifying. But at the end of the day, it's a sacrifice you have to take. Now because of course we are also in Brazil, it's good to pick up the water transmission early on as that means we're more likely to escape via a boat and also because it's a humid environment, more transmission. There we go, we've infected our first few hundreds with the disease. We're up to 500 cases which is very good. Make that now 700. And I'm going to invest in basic levels of drug resistance to start off with. This means that because we are in technically not a poor country, we are going to need to actually invest in drug resistance so that we spread and infect more. Now we've successfully managed to infect thousands and we've also crossed our first border into Argentina and Bolivia. I personally love to pick up genetic hardening very early on as it makes your disease more resistant to cure progress and I strongly do recommend that. We have also managed to pick up West Africa which is lovely and there we go our first few cases in America. Good start. Oh and Europe's coming along too. Great the UK is now infected. Apparently in this universe the UK includes all of Ireland but hey it's a controversial opinion for the comment section to decide oh god. Please don't. We're also going to evolve in rodent transmission that's right your humble little hamsters are now going to be able to transmit this disease. Now as we are starting to spread more and more, it's probably time that we start picking up a couple of really good symptoms. I strongly recommend coughing because it's really good, as well as pneumonia. This makes our disease more effective to spread in cold climates, and trust me, spreading to certain cold climates is very bloody important, isn't it Mr. Greenland? And even though Brazil started working on a cure, there's no need to panic because it's still going to take them 144 years to cure us. And there we go, we're starting to spread to more and more 
countries in Europe, which is a great start. The most important countries for us to infect from now on would be either Norway, Sweden or Denmark, so that we have a chance of infecting Iceland and Greenland. It's looking like we're going to pick up Madagascar any day now as South Africa has started to fall, which is fantastic news for us. Most land-bordered countries don't actually matter for the sole reason that you could just spec into birds and there you go, you've hopped the border. We're going to pick up the next level of genetic hardening as well as bacterial resilience, which is lovely. And we've naturally gained the rash infection, which is lovely. That's another way we can transmit. And I strongly recommend picking up sneezing. That's always powerful as well as sweating. There we go. We're going to have sneezy sweaty boys for this one. And there we go. We managed to get to Madagascar. Oh, that's the one thing we needed. All right, come on. All we've got to get is Greenland and Iceland now, and then we're safe. So far, no one in the world has closed any ports, and it's still going to take them 29 years to actually research a cure for this bad boy, which is lovely. Oh, and there we go. We picked up New Zealand as well. The Philippines will fall any day now too. And that's Iceland gone. Yes, there we go. We're getting all of these countries now. We are now more infectious than the common cold. Lovely. Wow, 2 billion, almost 3 billion people infected with this now. We haven't even landed in China yet, but I guess it's mostly because all of South America is gone. All of Africa is about to collapse. Oh yes, this is a great start. So what countries haven't we infected? Well, if we take a look at the list, we haven't infected Greenland, Sweden, Finland, the Baltic States, and Kazakhstan. And there we go, there goes Kazakhstan. And there goes Greenland as well. So it's now just Sweden, Finland, and the Baltic States, and they will all fall very quickly. Japan shuts down its airports. Well, it's already too late. Your entire country's infected. Rest in peace, Japan. And we have 110 disease points to spend. So with this glorious situation we find ourselves in, we're going to pick up one extra level in rodents, just because we are now starting to infect more urban countries countries and it's time for us to start murdering people simply because we have so many points we're going to grab insomnia paranoia as well as immune suppression and we will pick up total organ failure when the time is right don't worry ladies and gentlemen it's going to be coming very soon so there we go we're going to start seeing our first few people dying off around the world now as lethality has just started there we go first death in argentina we've managed to infect sweden and finland and i'm pretty sure that means no healthy countries left in the world and with that we can now switch from infecting to killing everyone there we go, with over 60 million now dead in the world, the focus is fully being thrown at the cure, and they will actually research a cure in 251 days. Sadly, that time is never going to come, as we've just picked up coma and total organ failure, and we're also going to whack on a genetic reshuffle after this. So we're going to whack on a genetic reshuffle, meaning they lose some of their cure progress. Lovely. Killed over 120 million people now. Oh, this is some great progress. Spain has broken down, meaning Spain can no longer actually focus on doing any cure research, which is lovely. I'm not sure there's many healthy people left in the world actually. Could actually do with killing these people a little bit quicker so I'm also going to pick up some necrosis as that's lovely stuff and there we go it's time for the world to start murdering people. Well there are now no healthy people left in the world and with that we are just going to immediately rinse the entire world's population into non-existence. There you go this was one of the easiest games I've ever played of Plague Inc but then again we are playing on casual difficulty but once again casual difficulty doesn't actually make a difference here. As you can see most of the world has now given up on cure progress and the population will soon just completely come to an end. There are only 900 million people left alive, 800 million, 500 million, 400 million. Oh, it just keeps on ticking down. Lovely stuff. As we approach the final 100 million infected, it's time for us to actually execute our exploit today, ladies and gentlemen. You see, when you finish a normal game of Plague Inc, the game goes, congratulations, well done, here take a gene, because you've actually completed the game. So all you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to finish finish the game and you'll get your lovely gene point which you can spend on improving your diseases the next time you play the game which is lovely but of course it actually takes time to sit down and do an entire game whilst it's only taken me 15 minutes or so here today depending on the disease you're doing this with it can take longer and 15 minutes is still tedious work so what's a much better way of gaining genes without actually having to play the game or well, quite simply wait until there's no one left in the world the moment as you can see there's only 16,000 people left alive in this glorious world which I've created. And what we're going to do with 16,000 people left is drop down a save. And actually if we can, and we're very cheeky, we're going to drop down a save when there is actually no one left alive in the world. There we go, we're down to 900 people, 300 people, 240 people, 167 people, 85 people. Get ready on that spacebar, ladies and gentlemen. 31, 0, bam. 
So what you want to do, you're on zero people, you pause the game. If there's another day in this game, you win the game immediately. So what you do is you save on the final day of the game. There you go, saving in process, do not switch off your machine, and bam, we let ourselves take forward a single day, and bam, we've won. Victory, eliminate all life on Earth. With that victory, we can see how we did in the game. As you can see, we did quite well, actually. Only took us 518 days. But what we're going to do is exit out of the game. Now, because we've won the game, we managed to gain a brand new gene. New gene discovered. The following gene has been unlocked. Transcellion Plus in single player. Very nice. Now, that new gene is lovely, but what's better than one new gene? Well, it's another new gene. How do you get a brand new second gene from that game? Well, you just simply go to load game and load up the, your previous game. There we go. As you can see, we're about to tick over and we've just won the game. And we can exit out again. Oh, we just unlocked Simto status. And we can repeat this process over and over again. Oh, it's lovely. Bam, another victory. Exit out of the game and we've unlocked Darwinist. Okay, and we can just go again and again and again. Remember, we only had 7% of genes unlocked when we started this exploit only 20 minutes ago. And yet we are racking up genes faster than anyone else can physically comprehend. This is lovely stuff. Fatostasis, lovely. Another great gene to add to the pile. We've unlocked Terracite. Great stuff. More genes for the single player pile. All off of one very easy casual game as well. Now, of course, you might be sat there wondering, well, what are the benefits of having all of these genes? Surely I could just play a regular disease and everything would be fine. Well, ladies and gentlemen, these genes in this game are rather overpowered. Well, certain combinations of them are. Allow me to demonstrate by playing a fungus. We're going to select the metabolic jump gene because, of course, we have access to 100% of genes now. Yes, why not? We're going to access, of course, the metabolic jump gene so that we we get more DNA from popping red biohazard bubbles. You get these from infecting new countries. We're going to pick up Darwinists, so we're more likely to mutate. Also going to pick up Native Biome. It doesn't actually really matter this one, but you know, whatever floats your boat. We're then going to pick up, of course, Aquasite, which is very useful, and Herbophile. And finally, the most important bonus of all, Paphostasis. Ability costs don't increase, but easier to cure. This is fine, trust me, 100% fine. We're going to be playing this on normal difficulty, and I'm about to demonstrate how a fungus is just completely utterly overpowered. Allow me to introduce the flying tea fungus, a disease which infects people by being ingested as tea. Trust me, it's going to be fantastic. It's what I've been using to mind control most of the world's population up until this point. Oh wait, maybe I let too much slip. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're going to start our brand new disease right here in China. Now, of course, when you start a brand new disease, you get your one DNA point for starting it and a second DNA point for infecting the country. We're now going to completely beans up the system by using our gene bonus, which means abilities points don't increase increase with each purchase. This means anything in here doesn't increase when you buy the next one. So if you buy cold resistance, one cold resistance, two will cost the same amount of seven DNA points. This is very nice as it stops exponentially increasing costs. What does this mean in actual practice? Well, you see the DNA flying T fungus, because it's a fungus, has this very strange ability, spore burst. It ever so slightly increases infectivity. It only costs one DNA point and it releases a burst of plague spores into the air and it infects a random new country in the world. In our case, we can hit this button here and we've just infected a new country. Now, if we didn't have our gene point, this bad boy here, Spore Burst 2, would cost two DNA points and the next one would cost four and then six and then eight and so on. It gets more and more expensive. In our case, we just spent one DNA point to infect a brand new country. We randomly got Norway. By infecting Norway, we gained two DNA points. So now we're up to four DNA points and we've infected a second country in the world. But the cost of infecting countries hasn't increased. This means we can just keep on spamming out infecting new countries around the world. Like so. There we go. We've just infected four new countries randomly around the world. New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Libya, and Poland. And of course, we get points for infecting new countries, which means we can spend those points on infecting a new country. So there we go. We have infected 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we've infected 12 new countries with only having 138 people infected in the actual world. Yes we've gained access to a lot of countries and we haven't even hit the end of our adventures ladies and gentlemen because we can do even more spore bursts get the final spore eruption and also spore hardening as you can see our infectivity is very high and we haven't really even spent much and we've infected most of the known world oh my goodness it's as easy as that right and now the infection is going to absolutely spiral out of control ladies and gentlemen we've infected thousands with our lovely tea plague and it's only going to get worse oh and there we go because of course we have our fungus bonuses 
loads of countries around the world will randomly suddenly get infected even if they don't necessarily border another country which is infected. It's not actually transmitted via land border, just randomly getting yeeted about the world off of the back of floating fungal tea spores. And as you can see, it's been very successful because all of our Argentina is gone and so is China. And now the world's actually starting to notice what's going on, although it's already too late. They've just actually had a flying tea fungus awareness day. Yes, I don't think a fair bit of awareness is going to matter much. We've been placed on a watch list, but what does it matter? We've already infected a fifth of the world and we're only a few months into the game, ladies and gentlemen. We are now more infectious than the common cold, and yes, my aim is now to actually increase the infectivity rate, although it doesn't really matter because we've already infected most of the world. I don't think there's many countries left which don't actually have a case. There we go, we've got Greenland and Iceland, so I think it's just Madagascar left now. Yep, Madagascar is the only country without an infection, but don't worry, even if we don't get a ship over there, it's fine because the fungus spores are likely just to carry themselves across naturally. Now, if we weren't actually using that gene, it would have cost us a ridiculous amount to get spore hardening. It only cost us two points to pick up spore hardening, but if we hadn't used our gene modifier, I think it would have cost us about 40 DNA points to actually pick up that bad boy, which is of course not worth the investment. Anyway, our disease has got so many DNA points which need to be spent, so uh, probably time for us to start spamming some stuff out. And there we go, we have Madagascar everywhere in the world is now infected. Lovely stuff. Now we just have to kill the world before they cure it, which is of course going to be very easy because we have 90 DNA points to spend, meaning we can just drop down a couple of bonus infectivities, like skin lesions, and of course total organ failure. Total organ failure being the greatest killer imaginable. And there we go, we're going to be able to pick up Madagascar, and that's going to be it for humanity. I don't really see how they're going to be able to combat us beyond this point. There is almost no healthy people left in the world. I think Iceland is the only place with healthy peoples. Oh, Iceland. Nice try. Rest in peace, Iceland. Rest in peace. Half of the world is already dead, and of course, what can we do to make it worse? Well, we can add coma onto the list of disorders which this tea fungus causes, as well as paralysis. Lovely. And there are no longer any healthy people left in the world, and we can just completely genetically reshuffle ourselves so that the scientists are further and further away from being able to cure us. Not that they're going to be able to for much longer, because apparently it's going to take them two years to finish this cure. Most Mostly thanks to the fact that I have murdered most of the world's population. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Success. Glorious, glorious success. The entire world has been defeated. Oh, this calls for a celebration. A refreshing cup of Yorkshire tea. Today, brought to you by the end of humanity as we know it. Make sure to take a nice long sip on that lovely beverage. And fondly remember the human race as it comes to an end. There we go. The flying tea fungus has successfully eliminated all life on Earth. We got a total score of 15,000 and we actually wiped out all of humanity in only 443 days. We're very interested to see what you guys can come up with as well. There actually used to be another exploit with this game involving the genes. You see, it used to be the case that you could use that same gene modifier and you used to be able to devolve and re-evolve the bonuses of the fungal spore. What that meant was it only cost one DNA point to invest in getting the fungal spore up and running, but then you could gain two DNA points from de-evolving the fungal spore special ability. And so you could do that repeatedly until you had infinite DNA points before the game had even started because you could do it on pause. It was of course exceedingly broken and so it was patched by the devs I think back in 2018 or 2014. Although then again I'm pretty sure there's a combination out there somewhere which is still completely broken. Either way, good luck on finding it. And stay safe out there ladies and gentlemen. Seriously, hop down into the comment section and tell me what you guys are up to during your lovely self-isolation. And hey, if you need a hand or want someone to chat to, hop on our lovely community discord. It's discord.gg slash spiffing with a capital S. It's a lovely place. I'm on there and I'm relatively active. I normally play CSGO most nights a week with my patrons, but other than that, you can often find me in the general chat of the Discord. So hey, even though you're in self-isolation, there's no need to isolate yourself from the lovely community, as we're here to all play games together. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of my lovely patrons who helped make my income slightly more stable in this rather turmoily time. And of course, if you're new here and have indeed enjoyed the video, feel free to give the video a like. And of course, do consider subscribing and joining our lovely community, as we'd absolutely love to have you on board. And if you're sat there wondering what video to watch next, look no further than this one on screen now and chosen by myself to be damn perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.